As mentioned earlier, the House is expected to vote on President Biden's Build Back Better plan today. Minority, minority leader Kevin McCarthy delayed yesterday's original vote after delivering a marathon speech on the House floor. He slammed President Biden, Democrats, and their entire agenda. Lawmakers are expected to reconvene in less than an hour from now uh, to continue the debate and hopefully vote. For more on this, let's bring in Nicole Killian. Uh, she is at the Capitol. Uh, Nicole, hopefully you didn't have to stay up all night with uh, Kevin McCarthy. I heard he talked about everything. He even threw in McDonald's at one point. Um, what more can you tell us about McCarthy's speech and this tactic to delay the vote? Oh, I did. I stayed up. I was at the Capitol. I did some grocery shopping. I went to sleep. I woke up. I was like, he's still talking. So uh, didn't get much sleep last night. But that being said, you know, basically what Leader McCarthy did is that he used this procedure called a magic minute. And for him and those that have used this tactic before, it was truly magical because he was able to extend that minute literally for eight and a half hours. And as you mentioned, using that opportunity basically to stall the bill you know, Democrats uh, were ready. They had the train moving. They were aiming to vote on this measure last night until uh, the leader got up on the floor. And so in doing so now, Democrats are going to have to wait until this morning to uh, vote on this. But, uh, you know, Leader McCarthy railed on the bill. He railed on Democrats for doing this uh, single handedly. Uh, you know, he kept talking about this being a situation of, of one party rule, uh, which he strongly <laughs> disagrees with. You know, he talked about the bill uh, being full of uh, reckless spending and really chastised his uh, Democratic colleagues for not including some things in this bill, for instance, like border security, which is something that uh, Republicans have been uh, pushing and clamoring for. But uh, again, uh, at this point, Democrats intending to go it alone. Uh, and what was also interesting, too, is the leader McCarthy also uh, was heckled during this uh, many times. But, you know, he kind of clapped back at people who, you know, heckled him a couple of times. You know, the speaker, uh, other Democratic leaders, you know, had to go back and visit uh, parts of the chamber where, where some lawmakers uh, were heckling the leader. So uh, it was quite uh, contentious at times, animated at times. Some folks fell asleep, <laughs> um, but really kind of one of these uh, rare moments uh, on the Hill where we see leaders using a particular tactic to try to make a point uh, about legislation, but even still, again, uh, not stopping Democrats from moving forward on this. Yeah, make a point, but he's sort of just delaying the inevitable. At least that's what Democrats are saying. So I guess the big question is just how likely is it that the House will actually vote on the Build Back Better plan today? Or are there further options for delay? I don't know. And also, does it have the support it needs to pass? Yeah, well, again, you know, this is not unusual from the standpoint of, you know, typically the minority party can do these types of procedural tactics to stall measures. And uh, quite frankly, Leader McCarthy actually eclipsed Speaker Pelosi's record. She did the same a couple years back uh, for uh, a, a DACA bill. So from that standpoint, again, you know, this is a tactic employed by both parties. You know, at this point, I think Democrats are trying to move this along as swiftly as possible. We know an aide to Speaker Pelosi said they are going to close out debate on this bill within a few minutes of opening up the session this morning. So uh, if that holds and if Republicans don't uh, employ any ad additional tactics, and we do expect this vote to move rather swiftly. So assuming the measure passes, uh, uh, the House uh, passes the House rather, and then goes on to the Senate, what are the chances that the chamber not only passes it, but but does so before the end of the year, because I think the real challenge is going to be in the Senate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was a challenge in the House, too. Let's not forget what happened. I mean, they were supposed to vote on this like two weeks ago at the same time uh, when they were taking up <laughs> infrastructure and that whole thing fell apart. But it was really infighting among Democrats. This time they got slowed down by these procedural hurdles uh, with Republicans. And uh, there was a little bit of uh, hesitance on the part of some moderates in the House who wanted to see that Congressional Budget Office score and make sure the bill stacks up, make sure it is fully paid for as Democrats 
that's a test uh, before they vote on it. At this point, uh, moderates in the House seem on board, but in the Senate, it will be uh, a tougher sell, namely with folks like Senator Joe Manchin, who has been uh, very insistent on reviewing the score. We haven't really heard from his office as of yet since this score was released uh, late yesterday on the House version of the bill, but uh, he has made very clear that he is concerned not only about the price tag, but the impact of this bill on the economy, on the debt, and potentially inflation, which we know is at a 30-year high. Yeah, so let us actually talk about the score that the Congressional Congressional Budget Office gave the bill, because we know that Democrats are saying it's going to be fully paid for. We'll do it by, you know, tightening up on sort of uh, taxes, IRS taxes on wealthy Americans um, and loopholes and all that sort of stuff. So what did we find out? What's the score on this? So basically what the Congressional Budget Office came back with is that uh, this would impact the deficit uh, by about $367 billion over the next 10 years. It would add, I think, about $160 billion uh, to the deficit. So uh, that is uh, a concern, but again, not enough, at least for House moderates, to prevent them from uh, voting on this bill today. But uh, in terms of this IRS tax provision, you know, look, this was something that uh, Democrats had in there as a potential uh, revenue raiser, thinking that, you know, if the IRS cracks down on tax cheats, uh, particularly wealthier Americans uh, to ensure those who may not have been audited as frequently as they should have been, uh, that that would generate some revenue. But the CBO did come back uh with lower estimates than than what the White House projected for that. I believe the CBO estimated that would raise uh, upwards of about $200 billion compared to $400 billion, which is what the White House was projecting. So that is a concern uh, among some lawmakers. But again, right now, not enough to slow this down in the House. But again, we'll see if it becomes an issue in the Senate. We will see. Nicole, thank you so much. I hope you find a nice little place to nap or something, you know, before your day really gets going again. Thank you. <laughs> you bet.